Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Thought I'd do a rundown for you of the basics on the Nikon SB700 speed light. And um, here I've got it set up on a tripod and you can see the back of it. And up here you can see the uh, angle scale for the tilt of the flash head. And down here, if you actually rotate this, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's markings along here as well for the um, angle for the rotation of the head as well. So the head does a full rotate to the left, right to the back, and then it'll come around all the way around and full rotation to the back again to the right. So that's a big difference on the newer speed lights as opposed to the 800 or the 600. And then it will also go slightly down and then obviously you can come right up fully um, straight up fully vertical so I leave the head in the forward position there and uh, so what we have here we have the uh, flash is now in TTL and you can see on the side here there is uh, TTL M GN and AB so basically what we've got here is the TTL mode then you can switch this into manual mode and here's where you can uh, adjust your output you hit this you hit the select button and then uh, from there you turn the rotator dial it's very easy as you can see I'm down to 1 16th I can swing it really quickly and go up to uh, 1 over 1 1 over 2 and the thing is too it's nice with this is if you back it all the way back to say 1 over 1 there and then I keep going back it takes it right back down to 1 over 128 and then it'll come up through there like that so you don't have to go fiddling and run right back down through the range it'll just cycle right through as you can see it's doing right there now 116, 18, 1 quarter, 1 2, 1 1 and now we're at 128 so that's kinda nice that it will do that for you there without having to run back and forth the uh, next setting here is GN that's for guide number and here is where you can actually set the distance between your subject and your flash you do it the same way just by turning the, the dial on the back here so that's a handy setting too if you want to get really into some manual settings there um, it's a different way to set it than using manual by applying the guide number you're just basically letting the flash work with the distance and then do the calculations I'm gonna put this back into TTL mode the zoom of the head is controlled back here by the zoom button and this is nice too because you can cycle right through it as well so you hit zoom will go from 24 28 35 50 70 85 105 120 and right back to 24 millimeters so you don't have to go back down again you just cycle right through so that's really nice um, the menu button here allows you to get into the menu and here's where you could manually set filters you can go uh, set your remote settings to use this as a remote flash you can turn the beep on and off you can do controls of the LCD panel for how bright you want it to be you can control the standby settings for when the flash will go into standby and when it will sleep and uh, you can set it manually to FX and DX here you can set the um, stops from manual you can have it go in uh, half stops or one third and then you can change your readouts from meters to feet so metric to imperial depending on where you're shooting if you're in the United States feet is often more more standard if you're in Canada Europe or a lot of the rest of the world we're in metric here you've got the auto focused assist control so you can turn this on or off you just hit uh, OK there and then we could hit that hit OK now it's off and to switch it back you just hit the OK in the center and back to on and hit OK so that's how you can control the auto focus assist that's the beam that allows your camera to help focus and here's where it shows you the version of the firmware of the flash that's what's really neat about the SB700 flash is you can update the firmware if they release one and then we come down to a reset you can reset all settings on here if you wanted to so that gives you some ideas uh, shows you what's in the menu here and uh, most of the time what you're going to be using is the remote there on the menu because that's where you're going to go in and do your remote settings um, and then what else do we have on here we've got your um, let's come back out of the uh, menu there so we've got your select button so when you're just in uh, in TTL there you can, can use this hit the select button and you can dial up or down flash compensation so that's handy there and um, of course if you're in manual mode 
you just hit the select button and that's what allows you to go up and down through your manual control settings. And then one of the newer things on the SB700 is the illumination pattern control and that's over here right here on the right side and the top one there is the standard position so that's just your standard lighting uh, position for the illumination and then in the center there below the standard you have uh, center weighted and what this does here is it actually makes a center weighted illumination pattern so you're actually getting a, a higher guide number at the center of your image than you are at the sides so it's kind of going the reverse of an even spread it's actually centering your light and then you've got the kind of the opposite to that is you've got your even pattern illumination and what this does is that this is for good for group shots for instance where it's going to prevent you from having less light fall off at the edge of the photo so if you have a group together this is a setting you would want to use and it prevents the light fall off there now we're down to the little master on off switch and basically here's how you turn it on this is kind of nice because it's a uh, you push it in and then swivel it so it's kind of like a lock so we're in off now you push the button in the center in and then swivel it and now we're in on and this is one of the big differences with the SB700 as opposed to the earlier um, generations of speed lights like the SB800 and the SB600 is it's very easy now to go to remote you just go to the next setting and there you're into remote and here's where you can control your group your channel your and you still have control over your zoom I guess I should point out as well as we've seen all along the thermometer gauge is, is engaged there as well so that tells you where your temperature's at because there is a a uh, temperature control on this as a, as a temperature protection it will shut down if it overheats and then of course if you're not going to use it for remote and you want to use it for a master you can set this to master that's the top setting there I just put it on and that allows you to use the SB700 as a master to control your remote speed lights in various groups and uh, it gives you full control to do that so typically if you're using it on camera obviously you'd have it in, in on and uh, probably in TTL depending on what you're using it for but most people would probably use it in TTL at that point and then if you're using it off camera you'd switch to remote and if you want to use it as a master you'd put it into master control let's give you a quick shot of the side of the speed light here you can see with the uh, speed light angled slightly down and then you've got your various angled positions all the way up to full vertical and uh, nice and solid construction on it you've also on this side you've got the battery door and this is a nice uh, feature on the new SB700 is it's got a security lock on it so you push in in the center of the door and then slide and then it opens up and there's your batteries in there I'm using Sanyo Eneloops so that's the nice thing about it is there's a push button in the center which provides you with a lock that way we'll spin the speed light around to the front a couple of the neat features on the SB700 are the uh, flash diffusion panel for wide angle and then um, as you saw there when I pulled out the diffusion panel out comes your, your built-in bounce card so that's it right there if you want to leave it out you just push the uh, flash diffusion panel back in and there's your bounce card so if you're shooting uh, and you want to use some bounce flash you can angle the head up uh, you can angle it even higher up like this and then uh, you've got a built-in bounce card Another thing I should point out just on the side of the flash above the battery door is the light sensor. And this is the light sensor for a wireless flash remote. So this is the sensor that the uh, SB700 uses when it's going to communicate with remote flashes. And so that's the sensor right there. One of the accessories that comes with the SB700 is the uh, diffusion dome. And you just clip this up here on top of the uh, speed light. Pops on just like that and you could see what the diffusion dome is gives you a nice diffuse light and uh, rather than sending the light straight forward the, the dome is going to put the light out at all angles out to the side out to the front and disperse it more all over the place instead of a focused beam straight forward so that's the diffusion dome that comes with the Nikon SB700 speed light and then a couple of the new features with the SB700 is these molded uh, uh, gels that come with it. So this is kind of a neat feature. There's the uh, amber gel that you can um, pop on there. This is the filter for uh, incandescent or tungsten lighting. 
So basically, if you want to match up the flash color to incandescent or tungsten lighting, this is the filter that you would use, the orangey amber color filter. And these are really nice. They're hard filters. They just pop on and off like that. So you don't have to worry about uh, using Roscoe gels or taping them on or anything like that. It's really handy. And then we have the fluorescent filter, the green one. And it pops on just the same way, same size filter. And this balances your flash's lighting to fluorescent light so that you can match up to fluorescent light if that's what's required in your shot. So these are really handy, these extra filters. And uh, they, weren't, uh, they weren't molded like this. They weren't a hard filter on the previous models of flash like the SB800 and the SB600. So handy to have. Nikon also makes an optional color filter set of additional colors that you can use with this as well. So a really neat feature of the SB700. So there you go, folks. That is the SB700 in a nutshell. Good looking flash, well built, uh, excellent power output, and a very good price. If you're looking for a Nikon flash, the SB700 Speedlight is a really good option to consider. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back with some new video posts, some new articles. And we'll keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of photography here at artoftheimage.com. Thanks, folks.